Hello and welcome to this continuing live coding series. We're creating a web application with JavaScript and Meteor.js framework. In previous um, episodes, so to speak, we have been doing more coding, uh, various uh, data visualizations and things like that. And today we're going to take a look at some pull requests that are coming in from a contributor. Uh, they're involving some chart settings for one of our pages and early work on porting this project over to Vue.js from Blaze. So let's take a look. And I might be able to close out this uh, work in progress here, but I want to get these sort of smaller pull requests merged. So I've been checking out the code and it's been it's looking good. Uh, this is going to bump our Meteor version, but it's basically a patch version, so it's, it's a small one. So a few of our packages are going to get updated here, a uh, number of them, but they're all more or less patch versions. I don't know what comes after the patch. Let's see. So it's like major, minor, patch, patch, patch. I don't know what that's called. All right, so the code down here. So let's go ahead and switch to this branch. Add chart settings branch. Mm, must not have pulled it from remote. I should have. Let's go to tags. Here it is. Original. Add chart settings. All right, let me get some water boiling real quick. I'll have a cup of tea while I'm working. get a little bit of tea to drink while I do this work. It's kind of nice and relaxing. So we've got the Ed Chart Settings branch checked out here. Again, I don't have to probably do too much in depth on reviewing the code. I've been doing this uh, as we go along. But let's go ahead and load up the project so it does look like it's recognized we got a Meteor update here. And it says restart Meteor to use it later. So that's it. And download the latest Meteor tool. Meteor, if you're not familiar, is a JavaScript web framework for end to end reactive um, web applications. It basically makes it really easy to get started and build an app without having to worry about too much configuration, you know, what database you're going to use, what bundler. Um, all sorts of little decisions. Uh, you don't even really have to have NPM installed, even though it's using NPM and Node underneath. It, it, it handles everything for the developer, uh, which means you also don't learn about all that stuff up front. But sometimes you just want to start building something new. Now this project is not new. It's, we've been building it for about f four years now. Okay. And now it is starting to, um, as the media has evolved, uh, it has been kind of picked apart a little bit. And now they're moving Babel out of the core, so they're actually wanting you to install it as an NPM package. Let's see if this is going to, it's crashing, so. Uh, looks like it's crashing on an internal build step. So. I'm gonna follow the advice here and just do npm install. So Meteor will wrap npm if you don't have it installed globally. Whoops. Control Shift C here. There we go. And that should freeze it to my package JSON. 
Now if I run Meteor, let's see what happens. Let's see what my Git says. We do have some new, one new package, dependency. I'm wondering why Shaley didn't pick that up. Hmm. So I did pick the latest commit from this branch. All right, well, I'm going to commit to it and package Shaley. Uh, what's, um, oops, wrong button, wrong command. Meteor, gotta run Meteor again, so it'll build. All right, my water's boiled, let me just grab a pot of tea real quick. Break back in just two minutes. Okay, we're we're still crashing. Bummer. Let's figure out why this is crashing. I'm just gonna rearrange slightly. Try not to bump the mic. There we go. <clears throat> so if we read this a little bit better. Huh. Babel and time help is built in. Save exact, huh? Okay, that is very specific. And you know, this is going to go away when we go to Meteor 1.7. I wish we somehow this <laughs> patch level change is just. You know, this is resolved in 1.8. Separate out Shaley's pull request on these dependency updates. and maybe Shaylee to take care. Take a look at this. Let me just ping Shaylee. reason this 1.8 branch is sort of uh, on a back burner is because it 
I don't know if it requires, but we're going to need to run a, um, an update on the Mongo. And I'm just a little bit nervous about that. I mean, we'll, we'll clearly, you know, back up the production server. Mm, but typically with Meteor updates, we haven't had to run any commands or mess with the Mongo version of the deployment. So let me just see if I can ping Shaley on this real quick. I don't think we need to sort of do these patch level upgrades. Let's just go for 1.8. All right. But in the meantime, Hmm. Looks like let's see if we're able to build with just pinning the version as the instruction said. If that's the case, then we're good to go. And I can commit that. What what's the change here then? Oops, wrong. So the package didn't necessarily change, but the pin version or what happened? Two five seven got downgraded. the Babel runtime. Ah, uh, I see. So actually it's a it's an upgrade. We're still on a beta version and Meteor and everything has moved on. Um, it's just because we're still hanging out back here at 1.6 point something. Point something. And this needs to be bumped. We're gonna be making this release soon though. And some of these others got upgraded too. Ah, good. This bootstrap has been hanging out. And there's security notices about that. Okay, so I think this is actually not too bad of a deal. It's quite a lot of changes, so oh, dang. Some downgrades. Uh, oh, I see it's not necessarily downgrade, it's just greater than. That means not literally greater than symbol, but I think that means hmm. I don't know what this means. Because this is pinning it at the exact version. That's essentially what I did. If I should commit to Shaley's branch, that's a problem. I'll just do a pull request against her branch. It's gonna be a heck of a big pull request, though, hard to review. settings. Yeah, it's a huge diff.
put in any other work I need to do to get this run, I'll just do my branch. Uh, but we should be good to go now. So it's running, I'm not complaining in the shell there, meteor shell. Cool, hello to the one viewer in the room. I just want to mention in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you see a command there that allows you to highlight a line of code in the text editor here. If you see any errors or interesting things you want to point out, uh, try that command. Just exclamation highlight, space the line number you'd like to highlight, and then an optional comment. But also just feel free to, to watch, there's no pressure to comment or highlight anything. Okay, so here's the app running. Uh, let me think here, so the changes, when we go to these homes pages, they're all red right now, this is pretty bad, but uh, this report has a chart settings here, here we go. So we're gonna show activity minutes. Okay, so we have a localization issue. So I'll take a picture of that. I should have think flame shot actually this is better. I highlight. I take a picture or whatever. I don't need the whole chart necessarily. Good context. Flame shot's an open source screenshot utility. I think it runs on uh, multi-platform, but I'm not sure. I'm running Ubuntu Linux here. But it lets you annotate and draw on your screenshots and blur parts of their, parts of them if there's you know, sensitive information, still like that. So let's go ahead and save this. Not sure how that went missing because Shaley didn't really have to touch this code. Picture looks like Shaley might be working on this as I'm working. That's a please check. Yeah. All right, then I'll just refresh this page. See, okay, there we go. So she merged my pull requests. This is really pretty cool. I mean, uh, different countries where I think maybe five or 10 time zones apart, but just, you know, being able to work with somebody almost in real time over such a large distance, that's pretty powerful. Oops, and I just realized I'm not observing the stream chat, but nobody has said anything, so that's okay. <laughs> All right, so basically, now that here's the deal is why I noticed it, obviously, because it kind of jumps out at you, but I wanted to double check that this axis reflects, ah, oh, the metric. So that might have been why 
uh, Shayla did actually touch this code. Uh, we didn't previously have this configuration, so the metric was defaulting to minutes or whatever, I think. Or anyway, so let's grab a flame shot of that as well. Uh, but actually, the, with the active account, same, same. Uh, the cool thing about flame shot, so uh, let's you adjust the screenshot boundaries you know, on your th little dilly bob highlights and different shapes you can draw a circle or block out something completely or blur it or redact it with little paint strokes things like that it's pretty pretty awesome published to different cloud or just imager i guess but uh, send it to another app for further processing and copy it to clipboard and it's got undo hit and redo history so if you mess them up you can step through those so yeah it's a really cool screenshot utility all right and we got this one just for to be thorough Edit. so yeah it probably didn't just go missing it's actually the fact that shaley has improved this this chart page now rather than just showing y-axis label we actually have two y-axis labels that toggle based on the metric, okay. But anyway, activity count, activity count, activity minutes, activity minutes. It's looking good. Values are changing. Minutes, 1,500, 60. Yeah, so they're the right orders of magnitude. Let's try the little aggregations. So we're showing weekly here, January 20th, January 27th, February 3rd. So they're aggregating to the first Monday of the week, I think it is. Monthly. First day of the month, pretty straightforward. January, February, March, April, looking good. Stack it, stacked week. Oh man, this is great. Really good stuff. And then that basically gives the end user a way to, uh, you know, ask specific questions like, like how much, uh, how much are people doing art? All right. Uh, how much? Oh. When you change the metric, the whole thing renders. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's because that's outside of. This is Plotly. This in, this uh, legend, interactive legend, is part of Plotly JS. Uh, these are our own configuration UIs. Anyway, everything else is looking good. Uh, and then if we switch to Swami, ah, yes, these were previously localized, and um, we will do a localization round once these labels are in place. Maybe Shaylee just didn't think she, that was her, sort of part of her work. But, uh, she doesn't have to do the Suomi one, but we should have an English one. changes some things with dependencies I'm going to gloss over real quick just do one last scan of the code typically we use camel case when we're attaching these to JavaScript function for IDs and class names reusing templates that we'd had had put in place basically the this was a little bit neglected we have this global report page that has this these same chart settings for like all the residents all the homes uh, then each 
home report. Ah, yeah, and then the other place is on the, um, when I view a home and I go to, this is the stale data, but so everybody's gone to inactive. I can refresh the data, but uh, in any case, uh, on the individual home, uh, residents are same, same kind of metrics uh, configuration. So the, we got some really good feedback on this just by being able to do this grouping and stacking and then filtering uh, really gives people, uh, double click it, there it goes. Whew. You know, they can just say, we want to know how often they're doing music and art, stuff like that. It's really cool. And then double click to reset. Pretty powerful. So you ask your own questions uh, because by way of example, the city of Tampere where this software is being used and developed for um, Tampere, Finland, has a sort of a mandate to make sure that every resident in the care of the city, these are elderly people uh, with dementia spectrum disorders, uh, that they all get, I think it's like 120 minutes a week of cultural activities like theater, art, music, uh, depends on how you define that. So. This data is really important for enriching people's lives. It's like verifying, it's so you can validate basically that the residents are getting the activity they need to live a fulfilling life. So it's pretty rad. And basically, uh, for those who haven't seen the way it works, when a caregiver uh, could be a f um, staff person, um, family or volunteer, and even some of these activities can be self-guided, uh, but generally there should be, there, there's generally somebody else facilitating. Um, you know, you pick an activity type like music and you know, you can pick a few residents because some of these are group activities. And when you did it, we want uh, to know about activities within the last week. So we have timely information and how long the activity was for. And whoops, well anyway, I canceled it. But not very much information. I can generate some over here. Um, we don't need a lot of information, uh, but that can lead to a lot of insight. If we can generate some. Once that runs, we should have a lot better view. So this is what you would see on a daily basis, probably a little more red, but anyway, this is really fresh mock data. Uh, you can see the pr pr proportion of each home. These homes uh, in the real world, so to speak, in real life, have usually 15 residents each, each of them, but there are some larger and smaller homes. So the proportion of residents that are in the very three activity tiers, inactive means basically I haven't done anything in the last seven days. That's pretty bad. Moderate means you've done a few things, I think under f like one to five activities in the last seven days. And excellent means you have almost had uh, one activity a day. So then there can be tons of homes. And then for each home, we want to see all the residents, how many days out of the last week they've had those uh, activities and how that's reflected, you know, red, yellow, green type thing. And you can see if there's any trends like was there a particular day that there was a big gap of residents? And what was what were the staff doing that? You know, did they have some other priorities? What's the overall trend going on? Uh, so it's got a downward trend of the excellent, but the yellow is increasing. So I think if these, you know, dummy data, but the staff continued on their path, then would the green would start coming. Uh, wait a minute. So yeah, because the green is going down, the yellow is going up. So mm, I think it's mainly you know these gaps. Uh, and then, you know, you can start filtering in on the individual residents to see what kind of stuff they want to do. Or if you're, just during the summertime, you want to know, you know, how many people are going out or who hasn't been out very much. You can answer those types of questions. Overall, um, are the activity types pretty balanced for the home? And are the facilitators balanced or are the staff doing their work? Or we, do we have a shortage of volunteers? So a lot of insights you can get. Just from a few filling out a few fields. All right, so that's this PR. I'm going to 
code is pretty clean. Using meaningful variable names, using const. These aren't relevant anymore, these comments. Okay, cool. Render the plot. There's really, really, really minor changes, <laughs> trivial changes. All right, let's take a step away from this pull request. Ah, so the view component. This is what I've been really looking forward to. Um, all the templates in this are written in Blaze, which is basically uh, a Meteor-specific HTML dialect. Uh, gives you some reactivity and things like that. It's, it's nice. Oops. This is actually what I was trying to do. Close this. There we go. Um, it's kind of like... Uh, Handlebars, basically it's handlebars inspired. So it's HTML uh, with these mustache templates. This is our localization helper, basically. But uh, you know, it's got some basic uh, template logic. It's just pretty standard stuff from the last 10, 15 years of web development. So this is uh, following pretty established conventions. Granted, things have changed uh, with React uh, and things like that with JSX. Uh, but I don't want to go that direction. So this project, uh, we're, we're porting over to view. So let's take a look at Shaley's PR. Doing a quick uh, view component. We're gonna try to do this one component at a time. So add view component. Incremental adoption. So let me find her PR. Add view component, there we go. Okay, so Oh, wow. This pull request updates to Meteor 1.8. Wait a minute, what? How did that happen? Huh, okay, I didn't realize that. Well, that's cool. That's where we want to be. So let me just go back here. And the chart settings. PR. Welcome to the new viewer. I see a couple of people have joined and left. Uh, I'm not sure if we have the original viewer here, 
If you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the chat. I'm open to pretty much any uh, type of question relating to software development, open source, stuff like that. Looks like this build has taken my CPU, so I apologize if my uh, my voice is breaking up. Oh. Uh -oh, I think I'm gonna have some file space problems, so my computer is gonna really struggle here to stream. <sighs> Try not to lose the the stream, but I'm gonna have to clean up my hard drive real quick. Space is full up. I'm just run a quick scan. So somehow my hard drive got just saturated. what I'm talking about the uh, Mongo update makes the old data incompatible and you have to basically migrate it and since I have dummy data in my local environment well basically Mongo is crashing admin user and generate some mock data but anyway I have to cross this bridge some point so let's just do it it's meteor 1.8 upgrade Mongo upgrade it's good stuff
clean up a couple of things real quick. Sorry for the delay there, just freeing up some space. All right, so since this code's running, what I'm looking for here is just a quick toggle that allows me to create an initial admin user. And we'll reload it. And here it goes, we'll reload here in just a second. Now we, we basically don't have any data, so I'll go to Meteor Shell. But we are running an updated version of Mongo. I'll have to read the Mongo docs about how to uh, do that migration. All right, so this is just going to create. Uh, basically scaffold out our app so we have ho homes that are put into groups and then residents who live in the homes and then the residents will have some activities uh, the, uh, so if I just refresh here it's high uh, sort of uh, hybrid reactive as you saw the home streamed into the UI but the activity charts didn't update uh, it's because they start to get really computationally expensive due to these aggregations and things like that so we lost reactivity along the way but now we can view a home, you know, see, well, this one's only got one, one residence. Let's see a little bit on here, a little home with a few residents. You know, it's starting to look like real data a little bit. But what we're gonna look at here is this code of oh, Shaley's. She uh, replaced one file with, or kind of added a child package. And ran meter upgrades. We gotta kind of get out of the habit though of doing these meter upgrades in uh, conjunction with other work because that's this tangly mess. It makes it hard to review because there's all these things that are not related to the to the particular issue. Okay, whatever. So essentially, what we have here is a view component wrapped in a Blaze helper. Pass it in by name. So this is standard Meteor Blaze stuff here, basically. And then borrowing in the convention of React and View properties coming in as props. Now, here's our view component. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty similar to Blaze, and it's just HTML pretty much with a few little decorators there for event handling and it also uses the sort of handlebars like syntax for for a template template interpolation and it has some nice things like piping so you can have uh, filters that run on or take it's basically a function that takes an argument, um, whatever the 
text is or value here gets kind of piped into this function. So we're borrowing it here, wrapping this localization thing because we want to maintain our localization strings without having to redo the whole localization process. Uh, and it's just JavaScript at the end of the day. So a lot of these things in the strings, when you, when you do any binding with view, either event binding or uh, or data binding, uh, and things inside these quotes actually just become JavaScript. Uh, and then if you, you know, the view specific stuff is just JavaScript inside script tags. So this is stuff like, you know, more or less we've been writing HTML and JavaScript, you know, sometimes in single files since, you know, the 90s. This isn't new stuff. It's kind of got some new syntax. And I think Vue 3 is even going to allow us to write plain classes and stuff, do a class based uh, API. That'll be really nice. Okay, but in the interim for this project, in order for us to transition from place to view, we have to have this little bit of baggage. That's it. So the main thing here, oh yeah, here's this localized filter. So it's just wrapping our existing localization um, package helper. And this is the function double underscore or dunder that grabs the localization string. Uh, so Shaley kind of in a flash of brilliance, I guess, or well, anyway, she, this is very elegant. I thought she had done it a different way, but previously that was even nicer. But anyway, she went with the filter approach, I think, so that we could have this. Ah, yes. So this is its own help uh, component. It's a shared localization component. Yeah. Shared view component, view component. Okay. Since it's only doing one thing, We might just name it what it does, localize. Let me see how this is imported real quick. Huh. That's confusing, I don't know how. So she registered as a global component that looks like. So the main thing here though, we've already skimmed over the view component. But it didn't detect view. That's funny. Yeah, nothing. Ah, okay. This detected it. There it is. <laughs> Why didn't this? This is the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's essentially it. I mean, if you look at the code over here, well, I guess I can look at it in my IDE. For this template, is the front page template. And it used to be a Blaze component, you know, front HTML, and so all the that's the beauty of it is just when you align closely with regular web standards HTML, uh, JSX kind of deviated from this path and I think it was really misguided. Um, you can pretty much copy and paste and just things work. And there's a lot of, you know, it's not perfect. HTML is not perfect. But I don't think we should throw it out and do everything in a new way in the JavaScript. I don't think that's. Well, that's not really it's the philosophy I want to align with. Right. So, so we can part of the model. Yes, we're not using Vuex. And we're not using the router yet. 
I think soon we'll be able to use it in this, in this project. It looks exactly the same though. None of this has really changed because it's just, you know, bootstrap styles. So this PR looks great. A little bit concerned about this blaze view component thing, which is this name. Understand. It's a little magic how this. How this gets passed in there. With Vue, typically when you want to inherit, you want to inherit a component. Or what is it called? Let me just double check this. prefer to do it this way. Check. Yeah, it's just mixings. Let's see, uh, what's the JavaScript? Here, there we go. <clears throat> All right, I'll just have request changes there. That's, I think, relatively.
close to what we want. Actually, now it's just called mixins. So, yeah, looks good. A request change, but I don't know if it worked. fine here and it won't work but this is the like way you do mixins in view you you get it in your local scope and you assign it here to this mixing and pro mixing property uh, it's sort of a little bit mysterious oh yeah okay so there's that so I thought uh, in any case. so it's just a little mysterious how this front view is picking up that localized function. It's like somewhere in a global scope or what? Because it's, it's not here. And, and it, if it's just being treated as a mix in more or less. Then we should follow the view sort of the view official approach to these things. All right, no need. Looking good. Hello, three viewers. I just noticed uh, increasing there. Uh, feel free to um, add any comments or questions in the chat. Uh, what kind of front end frameworks are you all working with? Is anyone there doing uh, JavaScript? Any end to end JavaScript you're working, working with? I'd be interested to know. Sort of like what drew you all to the uh, JavaScript live coding session, if there's anything uh, you're hoping to learn here, I can maybe also um, plan a couple sessions uh, to live code some other topics and libraries. But in any case, I think both of these PRs, they're, they're really close. But I just gotta send them back one more time. This 1.8 thing is pretty big, but uh, All right, basically looking at the mixins docs, chatting with Shaylee a little bit and saying, uh, basically this is a good, man, I liked this one a lot. This was cool, but for some reason, I guess she didn't want to wrap that, darn it. 
<laughs> okay, so we'll use the filter for now. Filter approach, no worries. And mixing, that's pretty clean. Cool, no comments on the uh, JavaScript frameworks. Uh, also, if you're just joining us, uh, you can highlight a line of code in the text editor if you've got any questions or to draw my attention to a particular line using the command exclamation highlight the line number and in a comment like this that should oh yeah but I hadn't uh, actually joined this whole time Okay, there we are, Twitch highlighter in the house. So yeah, if you wanna highlight a code, go ahead. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna experiment with um, multi-user uh, sort of code along experience. Um, VS Code, I think it has a, a plugin for real-time coding. So if I get some friends in here that wanna uh, join and make some change at the same time, we're gonna try hosting a shared coding session. Yeah, so anyway, here's how that Twitch highlighter works now. Let's see if we do that again. I'll show you how it works. There it goes. So it just highlights it in green, so it draws my attention to it. Uh, you know, if you notice, I had left off a semicolon or had a typo there. Yeah, and you can just, or other questions or comments. And, you know, it's no bother to me if people spam it a little bit. I can remove those highlights. So, you know, feel free to just give it a try. Hey, that one actually didn't remove. That's kind of weird. Anyway, just basically trying to make this sort of an inclusive, uh, an interactive um, session, code session. Oh, it's got linted. Oh, yeah. The last thing I'll take a look at during this is my pull request. Um, probably have to rebase this. So let's see, user group assignment. It's my local. And let's see if I can go back to an old version of Meteor. If the data is going to have any problems, there's going to be sort of incompatibilities going backwards. So yeah, that's what I think Shaylee did in her other pull request, so she ran this patch upgrade. And I just asked that we not do dependency upgrades in the midst of a particular, you know, work assigned uh, regarding leading to an issue that we keep those separate. Just from my past experience, um, when you get tang the updates tangled into your your main working branches, your feature branches, uh, the updates sometimes cause problems, and it can be confusing whether or not it's a feature addition or the update that caused it. Also, it's harder on a reviewer, particularly when you have a lot of files changed. Uh, and then you get the update package JSON and stuff like that in there. So yeah, try not to do those. All right, so it looks like Mongo can't roll back or forward. Um, I'll have to figure out how to migrate the data here, but uh, on my local development environment, I can just reset and regenerate. This is why I haven't really wanted to go approach this 1.8 update, and we still have the 1.7. Uh, I've been pretty far behind on the Meteor Core updates. I think 1.8 resolved some problems of 1.7, so we're just going to try to, to hop over that. What are these cache files? Those should be in Git Ignore.
this is going to give me the same problem now. Let's read my package. So it had to, re had to be restored. This jumping between the versions also messed up my package lock. So now, what does get C? Oh, crap. Well, let's try running it. I can do is rebase, man. I gotta figure out, pick a pull request that's likely to get merged first. That's not what I was going. So yeah, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I believe the add chart settings pull request is gonna get merged. It's the smaller incremental update. The problem is then Shaylee's gonna commit to it. If I commit on top of her commits, This is not a simple, simple situation. I might just leave my branch until hers is merged and call it good for now. And these comments aren't really super important. So yeah, she's going to be committing into this branch more. chart settings.
So essentially, clean up these comments. So that's you know, like one commit, and add these English localization strings. Uh, that's one commit. This is ready to merge. Looking good. I believe I should be able to npm install it now. using different versions of NPM or something. Because not the NPM install. It's resolving different package. Yeah, versions. It's actually downgrading them. Out of sync now. I told her in chat I would take this and finish this pull request because it's really good work, and I just want to kind of take it the last, uh, last inch. The last few millimeters. So where did my comments end up? Client views, home report, report. JS. Let's see if there's any lint first. Just always save the first thing I do. Because my IDE will lint on save. We have line 47, so I went past it. And Shaley did this. Boom. As well as. What is this? 67? Good. Um, good. X axis title, Y axis, that's the activity metric. And those are what I need to add to the localization string. Localization file. Here we go. So if we hop over here, internationalization. We just start with English. So our default language, home residence activity chart, Y axis. Home residence. Y axis. Um, I think it's just metric. So it would be minutes. Or count. 
Wait, let me think. let me just get some dummy data real quick. user there we go so we get some homes let's view a home report looking good yes yeah, so it's just underscore minutes into anything we use the same variable name from the client to the server and back to the client Just think for one more second about those um, dependencies. Do I don't have to do anything with those? Are they? They're okay, I think. All right, deleting branch. Yes, and if we had mentioned the correct issue, that would have closed it with this. Let me go close the issue now. So 345 is the pull request. Just kind of tying these together. Three, three, five. Close it so <laughs> I referenced it. So. There we go. Yeah, so GitHub, when you refer to an issue with a keyword, this closes or fixes either in a commit or in a pull request description or perhaps the title. 
When that pull request gets merged, GitHub will actually close the related issues. You can close multiple issues this way. So it's a good way of keeping stuff clean. Pretty nice feature. I think GitLab might do something like that too, but I'm mainly using GitHub on my day to day. So yeah. I like, I think GitLab's got a lot of good qualities. So, all right, so now this is merged into develop. I can rebase develop into my branch. Oh boy, here we go. Let's see how things work. I just want to get this one merged as well today. A little bit hasty, but this has been under work for a while. Feels like a while. Yeah, over a month. And some conflicts. For package lock, no problem. If I rebase, that might resolve it. Package lock, though we're not manu manually managing it. So I don't know really what the rebase should look at. Like, I should just let NPM do that. Hmm. Man. Yeah, because if I take. Now it's going to let me use the web editor, so they, they can't read too many lines here. Yeah, let me try this on my local. How does this work? If I do it in um, VS Code, I think it gives me a couple little helpers. Makes it a little bit more elegant. So without further ado, be prepared to watch me get frustrated while rebasing some changes. So first, we need to get those latest changes from develop. Pull those down from fresh. Then we switch to my, I can like delete some of these branches by now too. I got too many local branches. I don't even know how old some of these are. Still complaining, so I'm just gonna give it a capital D. Oops. There we go. So every once in a while, I better clean up this stuff. User group assignments, my branch develop is up to date with Origin Master. I'm keeping this view component around, and we merge Shaley's other branch. So now I'm gonna check out my branch. And it didn't update the dang default get integration so if I refresh it maybe it'll there we go <laughs> use group assignment all right let's try this rebase so I wrote an article on this is a very very short one because for several years I've been doing rebasing wrong I've been having some pains with rebasing, particularly when you're working in, uh, with other people in a remote that is changing a lot. Uh, so the sort of literature, the tutorials I've read on rebasing just tell you about 
the basics, like what what happens when you rebase, but not what happens when you rebase when you when you have an origin when you have like an, a remote branch that also needs you need to push those rebase changes to or some contributors have been working in um, the branch you're going to rebase into your branch. So those changes. So yeah, first thing we did, make sure the branch we're going to rebase into our working branch is up to date with the recent uh, remote changes. So whatever your remote is, origin, and whatever your branch is. Ours is develop. Then we're going to check out our branch, which we've done that. And we're going to rebase the develop though. This is a little bit painful because it's going to ask me to resolve the issues. But VS Code makes it actually pretty easy. I'm using these little helpers. Accept both changes. So, depending on how many conflicts there are. So, current change. is the one I want here because we did this 7.55. So this is the incoming change. And this is the current change. So it's the current change. So we check out down here. So it's basically what GitHub let, lets you do, but you get a button to click on. Uh, we went to current change because that's got much newer version of browser five. Oh, HTTPS browser five. What the heck? <laughs> All right. This one got downgraded. I'm going to pretty much just default to the current change in all these cases. Oh, this one's not so simple, though. Just to get through this rebase, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to let NPM generate this stuff. This I shouldn't be messing with. Yeah, the nice thing about having those buttons is it cleans up the comments and we'll pick one or the other. Uh, but I think there's, this is just going to be messed up right here. So anyway, we'll save it. We will continue. Okay, so at least this. Should be tractable, should be sort of, or not tractable, but. I should be able to figure it out. Hmm. So what's the overall thing here? These are just server methods.
we should use both changes here. This is used by my permissions code. And this is used by Shaley's refactorer, perhaps? It's reducing. Code. Yeah. For the chart settings. I think that was part of her pull request. So we got server publications methods residence. Should ignore that and just uh, git add. The fortunate thing is I'm running these on my local branch. So if something gets really messed up, Basically, we're passing this to context whether or not uh, we're going to show visible or so users, uh, residents who are visible to a user, meaning that the user can see them, and then whether or not they are part of if they have an active residency or not. So this nothing was changed in the head. Incoming chain looks here. Save that. So we're in. Server methods residence JS. Again. Okay. Fourth step is to push it into this upstream branch. So that, that we've done the rebase and resolved the conflicts. That's the stressful bit, right there. But now we're, I think we're. Let me click around a little bit. But uh, we're not running. See if this works. Didn't introduce any bugs. I can refresh this now. So yeah, this user hasn't been assigned. They're an admin, but they can't see anyone. That's actually the additional thing I need to add is a special case for the admin users. Every place. So here, the admin user can see everybody. The residence page, they can only see residents from own Nella. Which is this. So there's like one a zero. Two, three, four, five. So five users, 
five users. So it's just slightly inconsistent behavior. So the admin user is supposed to be able to see every user in the system. So looks like I had a little bit more work to do. No worries, actually, because this is the point of it all. So I'm at the homes page. That's why that wasn't working. Admin user can see the report. They can see all the reports, in fact. see all the activities. This is all the activities for oh man. Here I can short circuit it. Get user visible active resident IDs. Yet this is returning residencies. So that's misnamed. No, no, it's not. It's mapping. It's mapping. Trace this from the client node. I believe I can short circuit something like this. So, um, so I have the user ID there. Basically, to follow up on this rebasing, this is the last uh, bit. I just want to finish up for the. We'll be watching along on the stream. Um, once you've done the, again the pain, a little bit of the painful part of the actual rebase and resolving conflicts. You'll push it to your upstream using this flag, force with lease. This was the breakthrough for me because there was, I would just do a normal push uh, and you can see it evident here actually. I have 67 changes coming down and 74 going up. If you do this, you're going to get in for a world of hurt. You're going to have a lot of duplicate um, commits that were basically rebased into this branch. They're now out of sync. So this force will basically reset your upstream branch. Uh, and force with lease is a little bit safer if something happens, like somebody commits into that branch. If the operation fails, the push operation fails, it'll roll things back. So let me just go ahead and do that. And if things go awry, they just go awry. All right, so now we're good. This should. Update in just a second. If I actually just trigger it. Oh, I was already there. So if I just say, hey, refresh. So we're up to date here. And if I come over here, this is what I'm hoping. I should still see 66 commits here. 34 files change, more or less. And just these commits with my face on them. None of Shaley's commits, which I just rebased into mine. If I refresh this page now. So yeah, the rebase happened, and all the rebase basically did, if I can find uh, my git graph, it just moves all the work I had done to the head of the line. My work had gotten out of sync and kind of fell behind. I guess it just fell behind this. It was just recently merged. There's my little branch off there. Yes, and then my commits were down here on the graph a little bit further. Now they just got moved to the front. That's all Rebase is doing. It just picks up a whole series of commits and moves them up. Um, basically applies them on top of the, the tip of the branch that you're rebasing into it. All right, so we're good to go. If you need to refer to that, um, it's on dev2, dev.2, full git rebase flow for a busy remote. So let's go take a look at the um, media roles docs real quick.
So I just need a command to check if a meter ha uh, if a user has a role. We're gonna check if they're an admin user. I've done this in my code elsewhere. If the docs are faster, here it is. So the user ID. This is basically gonna be admin without without the list. So roles that users in role. So I'm gonna let, so basically we're gonna, here's my idea. So let, what is this called, selector equal an empty object, right? By default, no. secure by default but <laughs> basically if I pass in an empty selector it's going to return everything I'm going to use this selector here If they're not an admin, IDs and use them in the selector. So resident I, uh, residency, because of visible residency IDs. Residencies are tied to residents. Uh, I'm kind of tired to go into it right now, so I apologize to uh, viewers who haven't seen the previous series. But basically, people live in homes uh, in this care community and. The time, the period in which they're in the home is called the residency. We're trying to just use really common sense, uh, common words in our data model. And so what we're trying to do is say that only certain users should see certain residents. In order to do that, we have to go through this kind of like meta thing, this residency. Uh, but cool, so we've got that. Let's see if that even just works right off the bat. Um, these names are not showing because the subscription is not working. And this is a server side change. And User visible active resident IDs. Yeah, because we're at the end of the day, we're pulling in resident IDs. I think this is used in the subscriptions. So this might be the crux. No, they're not there still. Okay, so we'll have to fix that. What about residents? No, that's not working either. that this is um, the code path is even touching this method right here so if I refresh this now yep not used here so I have to start with the client and work my way in but I believe this is the pattern to follow and you know I think this method was actually deprecated So I hope when I rebased, I didn't like uh, leave in a deprecated method. The reason being uh, an active resident is somebody who lives in a house currently, has no move out date. And we move that to a parameter or an argument. And move out, uh, being departed. So let's just trace this back. It's not too hard to fix if that's the case, but it does mean it is. 
a regression. Hello and welcome to any new viewers here. Uh, I'm open to conversation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me anything about generally web development, open source development type stuff, uh, the purpose of this project or other topics. If you'd like to participate in the code uh, session, you can highlight a line of code by using the exclamation highlight and the line number and then adding a comment there. So exclamation highlight, number 109, there's the ADP parted. So this is actually what I was looking for. And basically highlights in, you know, not too bad of color or whatever for lack of a better word and draws my attention to it so yeah get user visible residents I believe this method is not even used let me if so just kind of delete it and what I will do is just move this selector logic over there and that might just fix these two bugs I'm trying to reuse code as much as possible so there's common code paths there's get user visible active residents so yeah it's only defined never called okay so maybe I forgot to clean that up or when I rebased it, it came back. Okay, it came back. So essentially, the selector will have departed. Oh, or I'll come back to it. So let me just grab all this. I'll come back. Delete, save, cleans it up for me. Hide the sidebar. Where did it go? Did it departed? Yes. All right, did use a visible residence. We took the active part out. That way it's an argument now. Our code's more generic. And get, uh, so visible residency IDs. This is a little tricky. But we're still looking at residencies, so I think we're good. Let's find that. So I have this code in my clipboard. Use visible residency IDs. Oh, that's nice. I didn't have to use my clipboard, and it just sees that it's highlighted. And Okay, great. Here's okay, so where it's called so is residence. Where it's defined is residency. So we're trying to keep things a little bit organized. But it's quick to get un or disorganized, so So we're using this selector here. All right, and here's basically where we'll follow this pattern. Let me just plop my code down. We'll call it selector. If they're not an admin, we will do I need to override this selector for what I can do.
ID equals right because we're gonna add a property to the selector if the user is not an admin so this is all the previous stuff you just if they're not an admin then they're subject to a specific role based or group based access control so that's doing that and ultimately it's getting the homes that are in the same groups so that's the the focal point or the crux of this uh, ACL system is these groups that group users and homes together both yeah so if there are an admin well we're still going to take out the into account the departed so that's fine and this this is now called selector Hey, what's up? Just some funds. So, oh yeah, uh, right. Uh, so I, I can just do selector home ID equals an empty object. In which case, uh, let's see. Here, or you mean here? at the top that's right but if we don't um, filter by that I I don't think we need it now here so you want me to use selector home ID equals like this yeah and remember if you would try you can highlight a line of code with exclamation highlights space the line number so that, that actually would save us a little bit of confusion there. And then you can add an optional comment. So like, if I remove that one. For some reason my thing is bugging today. I normally you can remove these comments too. Oh, when I, when I haven't saved the file, but as soon as I save it, it cleans them up. Cool, got it. All right, yeah, so the option is uh, highlight 72, then like, you could do this. Equals an object, all right? So, something like this. And the cool thing about that is you know, it shows me who said it and then your exact comment. So it's a little more, uh, anyway, so it's just an aside. Remove the highlight. Uh, I still have to save something, damn. All right, what I'm, what just some funds means, you don't have to use home ID to assign a new object. You would only use select your home ID. So you're saying use dot notation into this bracket. This is more JavaScriptic. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Yeah, so this is a little bit too Pythonic. Okay, hold on, let me get back here real quick. I do need that though. Because selector is just an object. What is the downfall of using this square brackets? Or what's the uh, side effect or the difference? I didn't know there was a significant difference. Is it just uh, like stylistic or is there some kind of, because in Python there is a difference. Like 
with Python dicts, you grab keys with this notation, but then Python objects can have attributes that you use dot notation. Does JavaScript have some preference or some? Because I can, in any case, these two should be consistent how I'm doing it. So if I'm using dot notation here, I should use dot notation here. You use the brackets if home ID was a variable with a changing value. So it's kind of like more like let or something. So if I do this, so since neither of these were assigned in this object, they're just being added on, uh, if I assign them up here and I'm changing the value, so if I assigned it as a home, like something, then you say I would use square brackets or brackets. inside the object because I'm not assigning directly where these are properties of the selector object and actually selector is not the reference to selector is not changing here just uh, I think I can use const All right, let's try it this way with dot notation. So var home ID equals dynamic value. So this one right here. Well, Actually not, because that's some property here. I'm kind of confused by the comments, but I'll just see if this works. F5. Oh, dang. Okay, so, yeah, I don't mind typing a little bit more, so that's not an issue, but if it's, if there's some kind of, uh, about the value that changes, and I'm, I'm sort of explicitly telling myself this is like a static value, so to speak, uh, then I'm for it, but yeah, I don't want to drop brackets just because it's typing two extra characters, I don't really care about that. Uh, okay, so yep, yeah, it's is it working? Let me see. Well, I'm not getting a, any syntax errors, but I'm not getting more residencies. Let me just refresh. I'm not getting any activities now. So I think something messed up in my rebase. <laughs> Let's trace it. All right, so on a client, where we got two broken pages. Let's start with activities since we're in. Right through JS. Current user visible residence. Current user visible homes. Let's check out this current user visible residence uh, publication. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. And at some point I was using this. Damn it. All right. So we do here. 
Here you use Ruggie. Current user visible residence. Well, this one I just, I can side uh, track this whole thing real quick. Okay. The point, the problem is I'm now gonna have duplicate. Get user visible residence. Present IDs. So I'm using it. There's the method. Yeah, I'm using this in two publications. Residents and activities. They're both calling this method. So that's the crux, right? I just traced through this. Yeah, just some funds. If you have any suggestions on how I could simplify this method. Oh, that was not bad. I guess it's this method. Never mind. <laughs> well, I'm not working on this one, but it's quite long and there's a lot of branches. Damn. Doesn't mean it's good by home. Okay, so this one's straightforward enough. Just here. Visible residency IDs. It's got to be coming up here. Ah, okay, so it's an empty array. So, all right. Yeah, all is an empty array. Okay, good. That means I have a semantic error, probably. So I think we're going to full circle now here. That means that it boils down to one place in my code where I've got to do this. Oh, <laughs> that's why. Selector should be empty. We got a little discussion in about dot notation. There we go. <clears throat> nice stuff. Where did I put my console log? Oh boy. Five pages of activities. That's looking better. I don't have resident names still. So we'll look at that. Resident activities. I mean, residence page. Still on the warning page. I should see everybody here. All right, let's go back to activities. Finish that one. So a moment ago, I think I had no activities. Okay, so string, which file was that? Over here. Can you highlight the line if you see it? Or was it here? This one? No. 51. Here? Because this is correct. The method calls me your methods. You give it a name of a method. So that's just a convention. Or that's just the way this works. No. That would be kind of cool, though. I think um, more or less modern, so to speak, modern or meteor in the last couple of years. Uh, has switched away from this meteor 
call and just using regular um, you know, JavaScript functions. Yeah, this is a very specific deal, but essentially Meteor keeps like this registry of all these, what are called methods, what they're called Meteor methods. So they're very specific and each of them is just a string. Um, I'll actually just show you real quick because we're, we're working here in this methods folder, uh, so to speak. Uh, so Meteor has this methods function method that when you define new methods, you just pass this a, a dictionary of functions. And so when you tell Meteor to call a method, it's just going to take that string and use it as a selector to get the value, the, the function that runs. So they have that the string has to have the same name, but you're, it's not a variable because it's not actually a reference to the function. But this is old school meter. This is not how they recommend doing it anymore. All right. Now it's much more conventional and your intuition is right. It's okay. So I still got something, something breaking. So I have, uh, okay. So these, these are actually, Arguments that are passed into this function. So get user visible resident IDs. That's fine. Then. That's what we're actually working on, right? Okay, where is it? Well, we're just going to step through this code again because I think it's relevant. So the server method, so it's called in two places. So the, whoops, here we are. It takes two arguments. Yeah, again, this is just not a reference. It's it's just uh, oh, damn it. This is not a reference to anything. It's just a string that Meteor uses internally to find this. Yeah, yeah, cool. So somewhere along the line, everything is breaking down. So my activities page is using this method here. And this method relies in turn on this get visible residence ID. So let me kind of put these from left to right. Activities goes here. And then residence also goes there. So in fact, both of these point here. And then this goes down here to get visible residency IDs. All right. So if the user is admin, let's just check that out. So it knows we're admin, and hence it's able to load. So then in the case where the user is not an admin, they don't want to see 13 pages, so this is working. Um, what's not working is the resident names are not coming to the template here. So let me just take a look at that. I'll leave these files open. I'm going to take a quick look at the table the, in the client. Views, activities. HTML, let's just start here. Real quick. We're rendering a reactive table, all user visible. Uh, which seems to be working. Let me check this table settings. So I'll come back over here. Which is over here. Good, good. Look at table settings. And I look at the residents. Field. 
this is going to show multiple residents and it's going to render each cell in this table for each row in this column it's going to render this activities table residence cell very granular and this activities can be done by mo as I think I showed earlier I'm not sure if you were here at the time just some of us but um, activities can be done by multiple people at the same time there's a lot of group activities so what this is going to do is just render all their names <laughs> And to get their names is where things I think are breaking down. Helpers, so activity, and that's interesting. Who wrote that? Blame, blame. I oh, because I just did it. Oh, I did it anyway. <laughs> Okay, this might be where we're breaking down because if the data aren't actually in the client, then it's not going to be able to find one resident with that resident ID. So that could be part of it. So let's check the subscription out. Ooh, that's a good one. Can I read full name of undefined? So this is returning undefined. Yeah, I should have opened this earlier. Much earlier. If I look at my uh, Mimago residents. Zero. Okay, so to fix this, it's like two birds with one egg type of thing. The activities page is not working, and the residence page is not working, or it's not showing all the residents for probably the similar underlying issue. But now we have 22 residents and only one page. So this has something to do with the paginated collection. We're getting close. This is a non-trivial thing. This app is starting to get really complicated, but that's the fun of it. We're, our system is growing. We're getting more residents, getting more staff, more homes. It's actually in use in the real world. This is a feature that was requested by our principal um, client. Good stuff. So let's try to fix this residents subscription essentially on the activities app client views activity there should be the subscription current user visible residence which we've been tracing we're going to trace one more time where is the publish Just check what this is. Yeah, so it's empty array. So there we go. That's why nobody's showing up because they're not making it to the client. That is one of the really brilliant things about Meteor, though. This idea of um, publish and subscribe, that's what makes it reactive. When data changes on the server, it can, in most cases, just be pushed directly to the client in the exact context. Uh, that resolves a query. So only documents that change, that are being subscribed to, uh, that match the query, uh, will get pushed to the client. And essentially what's happening here is nothing is matching. So get user visible, resident IDs, still has a problem. Let's find that. Find work breaking down. Unfortunately, I'm still you know, just console logging to debug. You know, I don't really know how to quite. Uh, okay, that part is working. If I could put these breakpoints in this meteor app, I would really like that, but I'm, it just doesn't seem to work. So this part is working. Visible resident. Resident CIDs is working.
So it could be my map is breaking down. Over residency IDs. No, not working. All right, good. So now I know we can move a little bit closer in. More full circle, I'm tracing my tail here. Okay, so we, this is a problem. Exist is undefined. So departed got dropped. is fine it can be under part uh, sorry it is okay if departed is undefined so that's actually the problem is that it's getting into this it's getting through here it is undefined so undefined and null is undefined not equal to null or is undefined equal to null I better do this in meter shell Pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll 
always fix it. Understanding and this is a confusing part of JavaScript and also how data are passed from client to server in Meteor uh, when the value is not available. Okay, is there a more concise way of saying this? Yeah, I don't need an or because it's got to be. Yeah, otherwise it'll get in. Yeah, it's got to be and both of these cases. Is there a I say departed not equals false or if just if departed these are both falsy right that seems to work I don't remember why I did the null thing before. Okay, cool. And that's cleaner. I like it. It's readable. Yeah. If departed. Okay, cool. Yeah, so basically, so we got 135 pages. Things are working here. So this is if the user's not an admin. I'm just faking it. 50 pages. I can clean up all those logs. The selectors now looking good. My list is really big. There's that. I can start undigging my hole, putting the ground back in place. Okay, so everything else is the code look yeah, I just want to know that the departed is true and both null and undefined return false. Okay, cool. So both of those are falsy values. Yeah, so this works good. Is there anything else in a, any readability improvements here? You know, do you, what do you think about this, for example, that I'm finding and then this returns a more or less a list and then mapping it in place? I think, you know, that's not too much chaining, is it? Uh, then the other thing is a, move this to have its own variable and then I return this variable. Should I just go back to the, should I just go back to this? Residence find map. How many lines do you think is permissible after the return statement? I've seen some code where there's, you know, a dozen lines there and I believe that's crossing the threshold. But this might be permissible. Yeah, all right, cool. And it does, it's just a one liner that way. Nice. Okay, so moving back, putting, putting the earth back in place, piling up the stones, the foundations. So now we don't really need to hopefully look too much at this reactor table. But right, yeah, I'm just not using that later in the code. That's correct. But I've seen some funky business with, you know, maps and filters. Uh, sometimes even multiple map or filter, mul like chaining a bunch of stuff on a return statement. I, I don't. Uh, I think that some threshold then just keep it in a variable even if you just return that variable name. Console log, clean that up. And console log, cleaning that up. And that one. sure if I did anything here. No, I was just reading through this. I think it linted it when I saved, which is cool. I think this is kind of silly. Uh, probably done left padding it for displaying it. Mm. Is 
there a cleaner way to put to concatenate a list of strings with white space in the middle? Like if I these are if I return these, mm, these go straight to the template. Oh well, I'll leave it. I'll leave it alone. Okay, quick way to tell if a value is false or true. You just do not not or not not null. Bang bang null. All right, let's check my my git. Bang bang. Not not. So I added a const there. And there's probably some lint going on here. Yep, space, and then <laughs> turn these to double quotes. That's cool. This one I can probably revert. I think I was console logging it. What's going on here? Yellow ticks. Oh, these are the function complexity. That's right. I like that plugin. I wish I had some concrete ways of simplifying some of these plugins, uh, some of these functions. Just not chaining so much, maybe. I don't know. Breaking it down to smaller parts, but I think uh, come back to it another day. This will just clean up. Let's push these up to GitHub. Yeah, two minutes ago. All right, I'll ask for one round of testing on this, again, by Shaylee. She checked it out a week ago. Given I had this little, uh, well, I had to clean up the admin part. In a little bit of a struggle, I would like to get some more eyes on this. Now, wait a minute. Nah, the residence page. Brilliant. Okay, cool. This is a paginated table. So let's come over here. Closing everything, all my tabs. Closing the activities view. Now we're going to go over to the residence view. Just taking a look at it. It's a reactive table right here. And it's just going straight against the residencies collection. I still have something in my console. I mean, maybe not. No, I'm way down here. Oh, this is a template method. So let's see. Residencies. helper called residencies here it is 
Okay, so that's actually not a collection. That's a function that's running in the template context. And yeah, if I check, if I take a look here at my subscription, I think I have all the data. So let me double check. If we go to mini Mongo. Yeah, I got 54 residents, which I believe is what's in my dummy data. Uh, just only have one page here. And I think it's just, there's some redundancy. But that's funny. Let me check my residencies. Ah, uh, there's like five residencies. So there we go. Again, this is that meta. This is a complicated feature, but it's really important because otherwise people get overwhelmed by seeing too much information. They see too many residents when maybe they're only in charge of like 15 people, five people. And in our case, the system where we have this deployed has over a thousand residents, uh, uh, something along that lines. So how are we getting f the residencies? All homes, here we go. Current user visible residencies. Here's a little, maybe I can clean up a little bit. Here I'm doing an explicit null to avoid that whole unde undefined situation. But since I'm in an auto run function, really the only thing that needs to change, the only difference between these two branching statements is when I'm doing it departed. Move those out. Yeah, this lets people toggle. They sometimes you, you want to see residents who've moved out or who no longer live there for various reasons, and sometimes you don't. statement now and basically I could do this this is not a run function if you're in TTION So it will change, it'll rerun whenever the value of this include departed changes anyway. So that's a lot cleaner. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute. Problem is these aren't mutually exclusive. Include departed means show all residents for all time, but not ex not including recard departed only shows the residents. I don't have a move out date. I th 
This code is like when you're here, but I don't think it's gonna work. I don't think it's semantically correct. It should be include departed. Chase this rabbit hole, but I think it might. It's confusing as hell to me, so I, I bet this is a little bit confusing uh, watching. But I think you'll see it in just a second when we look at get user visible residency IDs, the server method residencies. So here's where it's defined. It boils down to the Mongo cursor, as we were just looking at. So if I change this to include departed. about code reuse. So let's just console log here before we go any deeper. Because bearing in mind that this method is used in two places, get user visible residency IDs is used on the residency pages to generate this list and I've got an error. That's a good sign. Yeah, because now my publications are going to work. Break. <laughs> because I'm spreading this to part. Yeah, I'm not going to go down this, uh, this null. I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole. That means I have to say, I have to do this funny little dance in the client. All this crap. I'd like to clean this up though, but it means I have to go through all this other code. This is cool though. And this might not even be necessary. But I just can't use this Boolean value here. I can't use false. I can't uh, I can't send this true ever. But I can leave this at null. Not equal to true. Then I can do that. In the case of not showing any departed, I use this directly in the Mongo query. Oh, I didn't. Is things building now? Man, I gotta admit, this has just been a really fatiguing pull request in general. I've been working on this for over a month. So I just want to get it done. It's really hard to explain. I'm trying to keep my code as clean and understandable for my sake and hopefully anybody else who's contributing to this project. But it looks like we're still breaking. Well, here's the Mongo selector, in fact. <laughs> because if included department departed is true, move out date. If 
departed, the move out date should exist. If include departed. But that will filter out because we're saying only show residents who have departed, and that's not what we want to do, in fact. We want to show all residents ever. That's where, so this is wrong. This code is not correct. I basically need an or. Include departed. It's false. the semantics. This is a good step. So if we don't want to include the party, then we want this to be true. We want them to have anything here. False. Don't include the party. Then we No, we don't. Then we want people without a move out date. <laughs> Ouch. And then otherwise this is not this selector is not gonna have it. Essentially, so this is actually, I think, a good thing I found this. This is a Boolean toggle. So this will always pass a Boolean value. If I look over here at the template, maybe things are broken right now, but basically, Things are broken now. Departed is not defined. So let me just step through this one line. Residence JS 15. There we go. Yes. Let's fix that real quick. All right. There's this toggle button here that allow staff to look at all of the residents ever have lived there. I'm just repeating this, but it's uh, just to help it sink in, in my brain. <laughs> so include departed means show me everybody who's ever lived here. And this means just show me people who live here now. Because generally, uh, staff are concerned with the people who live there now. In fact, I could probably get rid of this checkbox altogether, but I'm not gonna do that. Because you can filter it as paginated, so I think it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just that there could be people with the same first name, last initial, so there's maybe reasons why people wanna ask us. Okay, but now we've got our semantics in, in check, and the code in the client's a little simpler. Now I have to go through both of these publications and make sure that the semantics follow through, carry through that. Definitely we're gonna need some a round of QA on this PR now. This is quite a lot of changes I've made since the last round of QA on this PR. Get all residents. 
Draw residencies. So we have to subscribe to both residencies and residents. Again, because they're sort of interrelated. So start here. Current user visible residencies include departed. And that means this also needs to reflect include departed. This is a hard coded value. There's not any conditional logic. This one be more semantic, so we got that. Subscribe, include departed, and the publish, include departed. So if Is he departed in here? It boils down to this. If include departed, If included part, in, yeah, so this is essentially I don't need to check for anymore. If include departed. So if not include departed. Just some of us, if you're still here, you're not totally baffled like I am. What do you, what do you think of this code? Is this all right or should I do the approach earlier where I was defining the selector and just using the selector here? Like, what do you think of this spread approach? So essentially the selector starts as an empty object. It's always gonna have user visible home IDs. So it's always going to have this home ID and user visible home IDs. That's going to be there. So I'm essentially doing it here. If I just go, let me try it. Why are we using user? I have to pass it in there. If I do this, this is always going to be there. And then so I don't need 
this. So don't include departed means they sh should not <laughs> have a move out date. Don't include departed. I get too crazy with the comments, but man, if I'm this baffled right now, and I read this code six months from now, or somebody else reads this code an hour from now, they're gonna not know what was going on. All right, so now I've got something going on. Grief. Did I make it through the storm? All right, we got two pages. And three pages because we're including departed. And one page, three pages, one page, three page, one page, three page, one page. Right. Now I'm an admin though. I'm an admin user. I should have two pages here. We're so close. So run available. Oh, it's because I closed it. Man. Okay, it's just after midnight here. So you can start to see I'm fatiguing. Hey, what's up? We have four, use, four viewers here. I am not drunk. I'm just slurring from fatigue. To any of the new viewers, if uh, you see something funny in my code or something that's really confusing or interesting that you'd like to point out, you can use the highlight command shown in the bottom left of your screen in the video. Just exclamation highlight and the line number. You can add an optional comment. It'll show me a little green box and your comment in line. It's, it's helpful for me. But feel free to also just point it out in the chat. That's what just, for, just some fun's been doing. And I've got the chat in my peripheral vision, so I will try to answer promptly. Feel free to also ask any questions, ask me anything, uh, particularly things are relating to coding, open source, web development, data visualization. We can have some conversations. Okay, so then what's up here? Let me double check my data. Okay, okay, okay. Those are old ones. So five residencies, 22 residents. So there's our mismatch there. It should be the same number basically, 22 residencies. All right, and I think it's just because I, what I've done is essentially change the semantics of the code in a good way. This in, uh, include departed. So this is client views residents. So the resident season's not working. Residence. So it's not working quite right. But the residence does seem to be working correct. So again, this is correct. This is where we are. So if include departed, we 
I check this home visual home IDs. Because I actually haven't touched that that code during this session. That could be the problem. Is this one still needs to check for an admin? Uh, five residents makes sense. It could be coming back from one of these dummy homes. So let's see, visible home IDs. There's three home IDs, okay. And if I just spot check those, basically there's one, two, three homes. So all three homes should be visible. So meaning all residents assigned to the homes. There's one there, zero there. Dummy data, so it's not very consistent. One there, two so far, three, four, five, six. So this is correct. Let's take a look at the selector. By the way, how's the activity form doing? So yeah, this is correct. This is showing. No, this is the same problem. We've got all the homes, but only five residents. The confusing part. So we only have residents. are all in own now. So it's only getting one group because my user is in own now. Great, is this breaking down too? This is just refresh that a few times. Hard refresh. Doing it. is cleared. Okay, so what's going on now? If I look at this activity form, residents from Courtney Berg, Kruistad, and Herzog, Herzog Fort. Herzog Fort, Courtney Berg, and Kruistad. So we're not getting these other homes. All right, we're peeling them away. Normally this would be the way we'd expect it, but this is an admin user. Just do a conditional here. That should make it all go away. I could have used that before. I don't know. 
don't see that there. User is in the role. Stuff here. This is from a different project. Uh, now we're cooking. Mm, so yeah, we start here with an empty selector. Essentially, whoops. an admin user should see all residencies. So, empty selector. So, it's not an admin user. Then, we're going to check their visible homes. Run this home ID property. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to repeat the thing, but with homes this time. Equals. I don't know if I can share this code. Maybe there's just gonna be some redundancies here. Which makes things a little brittle if we do decide to refactor. I mean, I'm using this, which is a library. So I'm just shortening it up here. So yeah, this shouldn't be asking for anybody that's moved out. I think I have another problem here. So this form. So I have all residencies and residencies. Residents and residencies, perfect match. Now our home is only three. This is where like GraphQL I think would be handy. So let's come back over to this form. Current user visible homes. Here we go. So this is using visible homes. They're subscribed, and this is subscribed, this is subscribed. Let's check the public location.
It's just scattered all throughout the dang code, but we gotta do this on the server side, so. Dot, and just pop that. Oops, no, I can't do that anymore. to assign groups. Yeah. Let's take a look here. So then we've got homes zero. Group A equals refresh because now we have that thing. So we'll watch this homes. When I open up the activity form, what's it gonna happen? Nine homes. All of them and all the residents. Oh man, I think we did it in this one, just didn't have any residents because of the mock data. Now if we go to residents, three pages, include departed, eight pages. This is starting to look good. I think we've gotten over the hill here. 55 resident. Yeah, all the homes are here. Let me just try this as a non. Had me user. Now, to a certain extent, I'm, I'm sharing this code because these are server side methods, publications, and methods. Super secret password. What the hell? Why isn't it? Gotta fix that. Activities. Resident. Mother. Oh, I shouldn't see anything here. Oh, I don't see anything here. So that's good. This is okay. But yeah, we shouldn't even see resident names here. Okay, getting closer. I'm gonna commit these changes. This is why we need the QA process. And I'm just not flippantly uh, merging this. Which means that we might be hiring soon. Anybody on the chat who's interested in doing some QA work, we do have some developer hours available monthly, weekly, probably about 10 hours a week we can pay uh, for QA and development work. So I'll commit these and then I'll fix that last thing. And at this point, I need a little bit more tea. So I'm gonna take a quick break, start some water on the boil and uh, come back, but I won't be too long.
thanks for whoever <laughs> stuck with me here while I was drinking some tea. It's been a little bit of a session for sure. We're in almost halfway into the third third hour. Well, sorry. Almost halfway into the fourth hour. Oh, just some funds. Hey, do you have a GitHub username? Are you still around? I, could, <laughs> I should be attributing you on these uh, commits here. I didn't realize. I didn't think about it until was, I had already committed, committed them. All right, I'm just going to do a quick reboot of my brain. Boing, 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 boing. Cool. Oops. Yep, I do this a lot of work. I close out all my tabs. And then I said, forget that I had saved unsaved work in one of those tabs <clears throat> that's not the case here because it would not let me do that all right so this page is behaving as it is expected to behave it's not very communicative. It doesn't really tell the user what's going on. This user has not been added to any groups, so they shouldn't see any residents. Now, for some reason, I'm either oversubscribed, or this is a server method, actually. Because the, there's no subscription active. This grouping is done on the server. So I think it's basically one point of contact I can inject my method to get the homes and IDs, something I'll have to look at it. But I should be able to share the code here so the validation is done in as few places as possible. So let's take a look. Starting in the activities, view activities, and there's these filters for the residents. And the HTML is very simple, it just populates a select uh, list with options and option groups for the homes. Ah, oh, so the pagination is actually done here. Not pagination, but the uh, the grouping, aggregation, so to speak. And this is pretty natural because it's rendering related code. Oh, I see. So this initial option is the placeholder. So yeah, this is uh, done in a helper. And in order to be reactive, we're calling a server method that is, in fact, aggregating these and returning them. Good. 
commit less limit there. the same name in the helper but here's where it's defined resident names grouped by home so this should actually be changed since it's only using one place user visible resident names grouped by home firstly and the second thing To, it's not relevant here. We show this allow multi resident each activity head can have multiple residents, so we don't fil allow filtering by departed here. That'd be too freaking crazy. So let's say. A little bit verbose, but that's what it is. So we're essentially getting the home ID here anyway. Implicitly hiding mm. departed residence. Do we want to do that? Hmm. That's another question. But here I can reuse our method to get user visible home IDs. server-side code it's safe to trust this user ID I don't know if this method could be invoked in the client anyway so it's a meter call no so we're getting yeah, meter not user I believe it's a function sorted here which makes sense that's that's a little bit of a problem <clears throat> all right my tea is ready so i'm just gonna have a glass of tea here so the paths are getting intertwined i could sort it in the client but mongo sorts it i don't know if i sort it again in the client i don't believe i do
was the method we were just working with here? Is this, this is not familiar. It's not chicken for admin. See, the thing is, this is, I believe, a reactive function. So if this changes, this publication will change for reason. Yeah, and then I'll invoke this method. If I move this, should be run here, moved into this method, and then visible home IDs can do the checking in order to call groups. It would be ID. These are visible home IDs. Move this down in a second. Work in progress. Yeah, this is gonna go right here. So I'll just put that triple lip dot ellipsis so I remember three of them. What do we got here? Oh yeah, so we need that right above there.
So it's taking the user ID, checking for admin role. Then if they are, oh, I already had that. Whoops, no problem. Uh, then we have to check out the permissions. If they're not an admin. Okay. Just trying to find the, the sort of least common denominator for all these publications and such. It's really tricky. Something we're going in a good direction. And then let's move this to a selector. Here's where we're selecting and fetching. Keeping in mind, this is returning just an array of IDs. So make sure I'm doing this correctly. And I can do the map. Back down that. Go over this again. Group ID and yeah. user groups. Yes, so selector. Then I can bring this property up there. Let's get a dot there. Equals in user groups. Turn home's fine, fetch map, and actually with the find, I don't need to fetch, I can just map. I learned that from another pair programmer in the last session. I'm having trouble remembering names. I won't, I'm, I don't remember your sorry, the uh, Twitch names until maybe you've hung out a few times. It's so I'm not trying to steal anybody's. Thunder, but okay, why is this looking good? Home, return homes, find selector map, home, home ID. So we're gonna get the home IDs. Return, I have a typo up here. I have extra semicolon. Whoa, 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 whoa. How did I do that? That was cool. There we are. I mean, non-admin should see only homes belonging to assigned groups. So that's what we're basically doing. Like permission groups. Great. So this more or less is having the same effect. I just moved the auth logic as deeply as I can in these hierarchy of methods. Get user visible home ID. I can rely on that everywhere. It's, everything is cool. It's not too complicated of a function. Get user visible home IDs. So that makes this, oh yes, and that's broken. Didn't mean to do that. Yep, all right, so then we're gonna check for ID and user visible home IDs. So more or less, there shouldn't be anything. Another tab real quick in the other browser. I'm gonna log in. And assign that user another test to a group. They will be in Thamela, just to mix things up a little bit. Now if I refresh this page, boom, we see some party pool there. Okay, this is not working now. Okay, are they seeing too many people? Too many people there. Let's go to a residence and check. Meteor, mini mango. They should see only one home, nine homes. Oh no. But we're zeroing in on it. Now I can remove the duplicate logic, move it all to this get user visible home IDs. And go further around the circle. <laughs> huh. 
so hard. Anybody in chat? Everyone just left. There's one person in chat. Chat, help, man. I'm going crazy. Let's let's just do. Why do I do that? Where's the side options? Well, here's where we want to use it. I mean, anytime we're grabbing home IDs. I just wondering if I want this sort. Might as well. User. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's what I was actually in the process of doing. This is such an out of place comment. Current user visible homes, though, if that's another thing. this step because it's already there. Yeah, and the source stuff we're not touching. Oh, sh hi guys. Well, so it's just reversing itself from home ID grabbing the home. DB lookups, but we have to do it anyway because we need those. Mm. Yeah, we're hitting the database multiple times here instead of all at once. So instead of passing an array and grabbing one query, one result, now I'm uh, multiplying this. Fortunately, these systems won't have super amounts of homes in them, like measured in at most in the hundreds. Uh, see if this comes back to bite us. I don't know if it will. there actually is but it didn't squiggle it didn't show me a squiggle
Well, why don't I just query them? I have the IDs here. This is where it gets circular because I just iterated over all those. Right? No, no, no. Yeah, to get the IDs. So yeah, just get user visible homes with calls get user visible home IDs. I don't know, it's a chicken and egg thing. Do I want the home before the ID? But this should definitely be a method. Well, that seems ridiculous though. Forget it. Trying to Nordic keyboard. At least this way it's one. <laughs> well, it's not even not adding another freaking set of, a, of database calls. So that's cool. Homes. Do I need something from here? Sort first name one. Do I need the home ID? Do I want to use fancy pantsy stuff here? Is that really important? not departed coming in from I'll leave it Shaley I think this looks good. All right, so it was breaking. So I need to go back over to activities. Here we go. Property ID of null. So there's probably, first it's null, that's underscore. Right, it's 138. So I'm looking at it. So home is no. Which is interesting. Oh my geez. So this could be that this homes. Uh, I'm not fetching them. Database cursor and then Syntax error. So basically, yeah, for what it's worth, 
This is a Mago database. This is a cursor that will query, but these are actual results. It's an easy mistake to make. And if I pass the cursor in here, then it's not going to be, it's not an array, but rather the results are an array, which would work in the map. And that's what I'm breaking down. Okay. Boy. I'm just going to refresh this. There we go. There we go. Things are working. Now, if I check these other pages, things are going to be broken again, but that's fine. 23 pages, so residents, nine. Lots of activities for nine residents, which is cool. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These seem to correspond. We're not pulling in residencies here. Man, does this work still? One of one, all right, nine residencies. Oh yeah, there's just 10 rows per page, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This seems to still be working. Activities, everybody's appearing here who should, I reckon. Oh my goodness, I think I made it. Four hours in, almost four hours. Oh boy. So what do we change here? So let's go back over here. So we have this method now. Get user visible home IDs. I'm just going to commit these and some work on it in two places. So essentially, all we changed here is to use the admin role now and to reuse this function, more or less, this method. That's the crux. That's about as deep as we can get into common code. Now we're going to use, use get user eligible home IDs. Good, good. I'll leave that in there and it's a little bit kludgy. Um, it's only used in one place. I added a sort of comment as to why. I don't even know if it's going to work. Let me actually double check that in the UI. So where did we, yeah, home P, no. Or is it that it's uh, reverse order? Mm -hmm. Let me just check over here in the admin user activities. No, it's not. The sort's not having an effect on it. That's going to be a feature request at some point. I might as well add it to. Add it to our backlog. But in any case, I'm going to take it out because this ain't working here. I think we have to sort of the client. For some reason, when you send data from the server to the client, I think uh, it loses its sorting. So let's take Current user visible home. client it's going to be the same pretty much exact whoops what the heck there's that left so uh, let's see p port north new port north new so you had nothing changed i think those are the order in which they were entered into the database something like that so that would mean that ordering is being preserved Ah, uh, because there's a client side query, perhaps? No, no, those come back from a server method. And then mapping. 
map, mapping over them. I'll add it to our backlog real quick. Activities, pay activities, filter, resident select. Trying to take a quick screenshot an annotated screenshot, but in any case, I should be able to just shift print screen it. Control print screen it? No, shift print screen, come on. Don't do me like this. And if I use uh flame shot, I can't open the thing. Oh, I can't interact. Now, I'm coming from KDE where you can do this. I use KDE on my work computer. I'm using GNOME on my, on this lap, on this desktop. So it's a subtle thing, but KDE wins out in this one. Let me just grab that full screen screenshot and see if did that even work if I just do a print screen <clears throat> the whole thing and file open in the GIMP and then just use my Use my crop tool. Uh, you can't see my GIMP screen. I'm just going to do this quickly without having to mess with my OBS settings. Crop tool. You can try this. If it doesn't work, I don't care that much, but somebody's gonna, well, I'll just put it more imperative. This is low hand fruit issue, but definitely help wanted. It's an enhancement. So anyone interested in contributing to an open source project, there you go. There's an option. All right, let's do this. We're so close. I just want to commit these and go to bed. 
So what do we do here? Simplify this a whole lot. Get user visible home IDs. I think we just called that there. We called it here. Yeah, so we're still doing the homes. So we're, I mean, we added a few queries here to get the home IDs to based on the group, but I don't think, I think it's like one query. So it's not too bad. Since we got it more narrowed down by virtue of finding the correct home IDs. So yeah, that's cool. Net net gain of one query. And I'll commit those separately. Use I'm just going to rename these. So I'll call user visible resident names grouped by homes. Let's see. Okay, well, how do I? More like explicit. Four hours on the dot. Push those changes. Call it not. No more changes to be seen. I'll just click through one more time and I'm going to call it a night. So we got residents. One of one resident page of residents. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine residents there. That's looking good. Activities I've just verified homes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. New Nestor Chester. None here. Seven, eight, nine. So we got nine residents. Things are lining up. And uh as an admin user, I believe we went through all this. My super secret password. We can see, you know, everything. We can see everybody. And we can see all of them. Wow. Good grief, that was good. Some good spinning around, but I think uh, at the end of things, uh, it was like more like a centrifuge. So we separated out some code and kind of condensed some and found a common uh, place for some of this home ID and the authentication type stuff, authorization type stuff to happen. Filtering out these ID these IDs, either residents, residencies, or homes. So yeah, this is kind of underneath the hood stuff. This feature. Uh, is not one of our sort of more exciting ones with, in terms of like data visualizations and things like that. But this is one of the more important ones in terms of growth and growing uh, our user base and our ability to support larger home care networks and maybe even a multi-tenancy model at some point. But right now we just, uh, our main client has 
uh, you know, we've grown this software in a context of 500 residents with maybe 500 to 1,000 staff and volunteers and family members who are maybe engaging on some level. Uh, now we're recently renewed that contract and agreed to expand this software for many more homes uh, around the, the city. So we need to figure out ways to make that simple on the end user so they don't see residents in homes where they're not even really concerned. But while still preserving the ability for the administrator to go in and manage the entire system. So I think we're good to go. 75 commits, about 45, 40 files changed. Not a lot of lines of code. I mean, in total, but it's just a lot of fidgeting, fidgeting with stuff. A little bit of cleanup. Okay, well, thank you very much for uh, everybody who's joined and watched the live stream. I appreciate um, people checking it out as I'm coding in real time. Thanks again to Just Some Funds for pointing out a couple, give me a couple pointers on my code style, things that could be improved. I appreciate it. Any kind of feedback that people give me. Um, again, I'm also interested in uh, having uh, sort of an AMA session while I'm, while I'm coding. It's kind of nice to get off on some side tracks every once in a while. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to give me a holler in the comments if you've got any questions or other ideas for the project or code. And thanks again for everybody who's watching. Have a great day. I hope to see you around.